I've used this one tool to take control and improve everything from my confidence to my cash flow, my marriage to my career, and my productivity to my parenting. I've cured myself of anxiety, built and sold two small businesses, been recruited to join the teams at CNN and Success Magazine, and I am now one of the most booked speakers in the world. In the next few chapters, you will learn the story behind the rule, what it is, why it works, and the compelling science to back it up. Finally, you will learn how you can use the number 5 second rule in combination with the latest research backed strategies to become healthier, happier, and more productive and effective at work. You will also learn how to use it to end worry, manage anxiety, find meaning in your life and beat any fear. When you first learn the rule, you will likely start using it to stick to your goals. Thanks to the rule, it not only happened, but it went great. That's another thing that's unique about the rule I may have created it, but it's not just my story to tell. Inside this book, you will meet people around the world from all walks of life who are using the rule in ways big and small, to take charge of their lives. Now, there is no room in Laura's life for excuses only. Action. Ken used the five-second rule the same day he learned it at the Project Management Institute National Conference to meet movers and shakers. Matthew used it to cold call C-level executives, and Alan used it to meet a dozen folks I wouldn't have otherwise at a PGA Tour event. Executives inside some of the world's most respected brands are using the rule to help their managers change, drive sales, engage teams, and innovate. Take Crystal at Yuza, whose entire sales team is using the five-second rule and the result has been awesome they've jumped to number one in our location. The number 5 second rule is so easy to learn and so important for confidence that we see managers, like Muse, teaching it to their teams all over the world. Mark, who, after decades of thinking about starting a non-profit ice hockey league for inner city kids, used the rule to finally get the idea out of my head and into action. Yes. Now partnered with former Olympians and NHL alumni to create camps, clinics, and leagues. It got so bad that he contemplated suicide. At his lowest point, he used the rule to put it down and call for help. Finding the courage to get out of his head by counting 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then calling for help. Saved his life. In using the rule for more than 7 years, and hearing from people all over the world, I've come to realize that every single day we face moments that are difficult, uncertain, and scary. And the confidence I exhibit on TV, online, and on stage is what I call real confidence. I've built real confidence by learning how to honor my instincts with action so that they come to life in the real world. Days after learning the rule, she used it to stop thinking about signing up for classes and actually do it, which was something she had been wanting to do but kept making excuses for, for a long time. As Marlo put it, it's absolutely incredible and awe-inspiring how easy things become once you wrap your head around your own ability to push yourself. She's right. Once you start using the rule to push yourself out of your head, and into action, you will be astonished by how easy it is to make a five-second decision that changes everything. I'd have an instinct to act and within five seconds my mind would kill it with doubt, excuses, worry, or fear. If you haven't seen or read this speech, you can find it on YouTube and it's definitely worth the 20 minutes it takes to watch. In it. Wallace steps up to the mic and starts off with this joke. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys, how's the water? 
and the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, What? The hell is water? You can hear the audience laugh in the video, and then Wallace explains the immediate point of the fish story is that the most obvious, important realities are often the ones that are the hardest to see and talk about. For me, the hardest thing to see and talk about was the very nature of change itself. You are one decision away from a completely different life. Inside this book, I am going to share everything that I've learned about change and the power of everyday courage. As you read the stories inside these pages, you might even realize that UV used the number 5 second rule before. If you look back on your life and reflect on some of the most important moments, I guarantee that UV made a life-changing decision purely on instinct. In 5 seconds flat, you made, what I call, a hard first decision. You ignored your fears and let your courage and your confidence speak for you. When she first learned about the number 5 second rule at her company as executive leadership off-site, it made her realize she had used the rule to make one of the most important decisions of her life she just didn't realize it at the time. I love how she describes the decision as a no-brainer because when you act with courage, your brain is not involved. But as Marlo said just a few pages ago, it is absolutely incredible and awe. Uh, inspiring how easy things become when you do. Doing the work to improve your life is simple, you can do it, and it's work you want to do because it has the most important work that there is. Courage. Slash carriage slash. Noun. The ability to do something that is difficult or scary. Stepping outside of your comfort zone. Sharing your ideas, speaking up, or showing up. Standing firm in your beliefs and values. And some days getting out of bed. The alarm rings, and you just don't tea. Feel like getting up and facing the day. In the beginning, it wasn't a big deal, but as is the case with any bad habit, as time went on, it snowballed into a much bigger problem that impacted my entire day. In reality, I was a mother of three driving back and forth to NYC, sleeping on friends' couches in the city, coaching clients on the side to make the ends meet, leaning too much on friends and family to fill the childcare gaps, and doing whatever I could to make it all work. After several years scraping by in the media business, I got my big break. I was cast to host a reality show for Fox. We shot a few episodes of a show called Someone Has Gotta Go, and then the network tabled the show. With me out of work and Chris's business struggling, the financial pressure mounted, scary letters from attorneys seemed to arrive daily and checks constantly bounced. I knew what I should or could be doing to make things better, but I cooled and t make myself do those things. I knew that if I tried to find a job outside of the media industry, it would help, but I cooled and t motivate myself to look. I d climb in bed drunk or buzzed, close my eyes, and dream about a different life one where I didn't t have to work and all of our problems had magically disappeared. I was 41 unemployed, in financial ruin, struggling with a drinking problem, and had zero confidence in my or my husband's abilities to fix our problems. I am not getting up right now, I am going back to sleep. The list of hard things is surprisingly universal. Speaking in a meeting. Staying positive. Making a decision. Finding time for yourself. Asking for feedback. Raising your hand. Asking for a raise. Ending self-doubt. Working on your are some. Hitting send on emails. Sticking to your plan. Leaving the house. Volunteering to go first. Showing up at a reunion. Blocking an ex on social media. Talking to someone you find attractive. 
Stepping on a dance. Floor. Publishing your work. Getting to the gym. Eating in moderation. Saying no. Asking for help. Letting your guard down. Admitting you are wrong. Listening. In my case, it was getting up on time. As soon. As that alarm rang, I didn't feel like the future me. I felt like the old me, and that. Old me wanted to keep sleeping. I thought to myself, that has it, I'll launch myself out of bed tomorrow like a rocket. There is more to this point about acting on your instincts than just the phrase. Trust your gut. New research from the University of Arizona, in partnership with Cornell and Duke, has shown that there is a powerful connection between your brain and your instinct to act. As you pass the gym, you will feel like you should exercise. That s one of the things I've learned using the when it comes to goals, dreams, and changing your life, your inner wisdom is a genius. Because, as history proves, you will never know when your greatest inspiration will strike and where that discovery will lead you if you trust yourself enough to act on it. In 1974, Art Fry got the idea for the post-it note because he needed a bookmark that would stay put on a page in his hymnal until Sunday's church service, but that would not damage the pages when he removed it. In researching this book, I discovered that the rule is, in the language of habit research, a starting ritual that activates the prefrontal cortex, helping to change your behavior. As you use the rule, you will see it too there is a 5 second window between your initial instinct to act and your brain stopping you. If I started pouring a drink that I shouldn't have, I'd 5 4 3 2 1 and put down the bottle of bourbon and walk away. If I felt myself being bitchy with Chris, I'd 5 4 3 2 1 and correct my tone and make myself be kinder. If I caught myself procrastinating, I'd 5 4 3 2 1 and sit down and start working on my r sum dot by pushing yourself to take the simple steps of moving your life forward you create momentum and experience a sense of freedom and power that has hard to accurately describe rachel found that the simple step of getting up on time started a chain of events that led to her losing 30 pounds bought my first home and reinvigorated my marriage. Rachel used the word reinvigorated, and that's exactly what the rule does. By using the rule to 5 4 3 2 1 and push herself to make small moves forward, she's breaking out of a mental jail. No longer trapped by analysis paralysis, Rebecca feels free for the first time in 47 years. There's an important concept in psychology put forth by Julian Rotter in 1954. It's called locus of control. The more that you believe that you are in control of your life, your actions and your future, the happier and more successful you will be. The moment it has time to assert yourself, you will not feel motivated. In fact, you want to feel like doing anything at all. If you want to improve your life, you will need to get off your rear end and kick your own butt. If you tend to overthink every move, you will discover the energy and confidence to stop thinking and actually move. By committing to 5 4 3 2 1 healthy, Jenny was able to use the rule to give herself the kick in the ass she needed. When Donna first learned the rule at an Ava Institute conference she thought, yeah, yeah I'll use it, but it's not going to be life changing that's how I felt about the rule to that I'd just use it as a trick to beat the snooze alarm. More importantly, where I see myself in years to come. As you use the rule more and more, you'll begin to feel courage, confidence, pride and a sense of control. I often tell people the rule will haunt you, and I mean it just ask Daryl. There is nothing more powerful than the feeling of confidence and pride you gain when you keep trudging forward, face life as challenges head on.
and push yourself to change for the better. I didn't he limit my research to the experts, I sent questionnaires to everyday people like you and me, who were using the rule right before we re about to do something that feels difficult, scary or uncertain, we hesitate. You might hesitate for a just nanosecond, but that s all it takes. If you break this habit of hesitating and you find the courage to take some kind of action, you will be astonished by how fast your life changes. Now he s able to do extraordinary things. You see, it s not the big moves that define our lives, it s the smallest ones. Within five seconds of stopping to think, you will have decided not to take any action on those small things. And here s the kicker. We've repeated this pattern of hesitating, worrying, and doubting ourselves so much, that these actions are now habits that have encoded in our brains. There is a simple, proven way to break or replace bad habits and the number 5 second rule is the easiest way to do it. Once you read about habit loops, starting rituals, activation energy, and the role that feelings play in triggering your decisions. ULL appreciate the magnitude of the as you use the rule, ULL. See how change hinges on 5 second decisions and just how easily you can take back control. As you use the rule over time, ULL experience a shift inside yourself that is much deeper, a transformation that impacts confidence and inner strength. Using the rule, ULL become the person you re meant to become in this next phase of your life. Oh. Chapter 4. Why the Rule Works. Over the years, I've received lots of questions about the I. Wanted to start your introduction to using the rule by answering some of the most frequently asked question I've received about this awesome tool. Anytime there is something you know you should do, but you feel uncertain, afraid, or overwhelmed just take control by counting backwards 5 4 3 2 1. Then, move when you get to 1. Counting and moving are actions. By teaching yourself to take action when normally you de stop yourself by thinking, you can create remarkable change. If you are wondering if the rule works if you count forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, instead of backwards 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the answer is no, it do s and t. When you count backwards 5, 4, 3, 2, there is nowhere to go after you reach 1, so it is a prompt to move. I called it the number 5 second rule because that s the first thing that popped into my mind the morning I first used it, and this nom stuck. Remember, I had seen a rocket launch the night before and thought to myself, I'll just launch myself out of bed like a rocket. The next morning, I counted backwards 5 4 3 2 1 because that s what NASA does when it launches a spaceship. I've come to learn that there are a lot of other 5 second rules in the world. Like the one about eating food off the floor, the 5 second shot clock in basketball, the game Ellen DeGeneres plays on her talk show, and the 5 second test you can do to see if a sidewalk s surface is too hot for your dog to walk on. Perhaps the name is not only apropos it s actually perfect because it references other 5 second windows in life, and that makes the rule feel that much more familiar, universal, and true. It s. The word just. The word just is in there because Nike recognizes something we've e talked a lot about in this book right before we act, we first stop and think. It s the moment right before you ask to join the pickup game that s already underway, the moment you contemplate whether to do a third set of reps, or when you start to question whether you will head out the door for a run in the pouring rain. Nike knows that there is greatness inside of you, and it s on the other side of your excuses. And that s where the number 5 second rule comes in, the rule is how you push yourself when no coach, competitor, parent, 
screaming fan, or teammate is there to push you while your mind starts working against you in nanoseconds. The barrage of thoughts and excuses Don T seemed to kick into full force and stop you for a few seconds. As Angela found, those five second decisions turned into 50 seconds and then 500 seconds when the fear was deeper. She now treats the number five second rule as if her brain will self destruct at zero. If it works for you to shorten or lengthen the window, personalize the rule to make it work for you. As I awoke this morning I mistakenly checked the thermometer, that took two seconds, but in that third second I started to put on my right sneaker. That is how the system in your brain works the longer that you think about something, the lower your urge to act becomes. Over the years, we've heard thousands of examples of how people are using the rule to improve their life, relationships, happiness, and work. When you take control of your mind, you'll be able to think about things that bring you joy instead of focusing on the negative. And the moment you get tricked into doing this, you'll get trapped by your thoughts. The rule leverages and is an example of some powerful and proven principles. In modern psychology, a bias toward action, internal locus of control, behavioral flexibility, the progress principle, starting rituals, the golden rule of habits, authentic pride, deliberate action, if then planning, and activation energy. Throughout this book, you'll learn more about these principles as we go into greater detail about how you can use the rule in specific areas of your life. The longer you think about that sales call, the less likely you ll make it. Here's how Tim described it after using the rule. Honestly, I think the rule is powerful simply because keeping it on the tip of your thoughts allows you to process and start on activities you would normally gloss over and ignore. I also keep saying, what the hell, I am leaning into this. So, it is powerful because it helps you break the formally embedded thought patterns about doing things and allows, me, anyway, to safely go for it. One thing most of us don't realize is that patterns of thinking like worrying, self-doubt, and fear are all just habits and you repeat these thought patterns without even realizing it. If everything you do to sabotage your happiness is a habit. That means you can follow the latest research to break the habits of waiting, doubting, holding back, staying silent, feeling insecure, avoiding, worry, overthinking. There is a golden rule of habits and it is very simple, in order to change any bad habit, you must replace the behavior pattern that you repeat. I'll teach you how to end the mental habits of Worrying, anxiety, panic, and fear using the number 5 second rule in combination with all the latest research. Instead of holding back, ULL54321 to push forward. The countdown is also what researchers call a starting ritual. Starting rituals interrupt your bad default patterns and trigger new, positive patterns. Over time, as you take more and more steps forward, ULL discover something else real confidence and pride in yourself. Part 2. The Power of Courage. B. Chapter 5. Everyday Courage. Before I discovered the number 5 second rule, if you had asked me to give you examples of courage, I would have given you a list of history makers. But after using the rule for seven years and hearing from so many people around the world, I have learned a very important certainty, everyday life is full of moments that are scary, uncertain, and difficult. As Bryce puts it, you can achieve anything that you are passionate about and are willing to work for. What's even cooler? After realizing that I was responsible for everything that happened in my life, Gabe used the rule to change his life by starting his own virtual reality company. Whenever he feels the desire to go back to one of those drugs, 
he uses the number 5 second rule to fight his addiction and retrain his mind. He counts backwards 5 4 3 2 1 to himself to trigger new behavior and his mindset completely changes and he goes about his day. Courage is, in fact, what I needed to get out of bed. As I began to write this book and started collecting stories of people around the world using the rule, it became clear that inside every decision there exist five seconds of courage that can change everything in our lives. The more the word courage came up, the more I began to wonder if there was something about one of the most historic moments of courage that would help me better understand the nature of courage itself. Here is how she described that historic moment in her own words. As the bus proceeded out of town on the third stop, the white passengers had filled the front of the bus. And I told him, just call the police. Then the radio interviewer asked her the million dollar question. What in the world ever made you decide to be the person who after all these years of Jim Crow and segregation, what made you at that particular moment decide you were going to keep that seat? She replied very simply. I felt that I was not being treated right and that I had a right to retain the seat that I had taken as a passenger on that bus. He pressed her again noting that she had been mistreated for years, and wanted to know what made her decide in that moment and in the interview, she paused for a second and then said. The time had just come that I had been pushed as far as I stand to be pushed, I suppose. He asked her if she planned it and she said. No. He asked her if it just sort of happened. It happened so. Fast, she just listened to her instincts telling her I was not being treated right, and she pushed herself to follow them. It is probable that if I had, I would have declined the nomination. Thank goodness he didn't he think it through. It's a moment when your instincts, values, and goals align, and you move so quickly you don't he have time or a valid reason to stop yourself. Parks said, I hadn't he thought I would be the person to do this, it hadn't he occurred to me. It probably hasn't he occurred to you either what great things you might be capable of achieving at work and in your lifetime. It is true, as Rosa Parks explained on air in that 1956 interview, that she was pushed as far as I could stand to be pushed by a system of discrimination. It's going to be just you sitting in a meeting at work, standing in your kitchen, riding the subway, looking at your phone staring at your computer, or thinking about something and all of sudden, it will happen. Courage is what Christine needs as she is sitting in a marketing meeting in Plano, Texas. He can either turn back toward his friends and pretend to care about the football game they read discussing, or find the courage to start walking toward her. They've hit their numbers three years in a row, and quotas just got raised yet again. She s. Inspired by her friend on Facebook, but feels discouraged by how long it s been since. She last exercised. Halfway around the world, Patel can t stop thinking about a friend whose son. Just died in a car accident. In Queensland, Australia, Todd knows exactly what he wants to do with his life. And it isn't t studying law, it s physical education. But before Todd can take control of his future, he ll need to face his parents' disappointment. And Mark is lying in bed in Auckland, Australia, where at s 30 p.m. he would love to make love to her, but he assumes she s not in the mood, he wants to lean over and kiss her shoulder but he fears rejection. Seth Godin once wrote a different part of our brains is activated when we Think about what s possible rather than what s required. I believe the same is true. When we think about being courageous, rather than focusing on the fears that stop us, there is something powerful about framing my struggle to get out of bed. Patel a struggle to call his friend, a sales organization s struggle to embrace a higher sales goal, and Alice s struggle to exercise as acts of everyday courage. When you push yourself, 
you may not change the world, the laws, or spark a civil rights movement but I can guarantee you LL change something equally as important you LL change yourself in the amount of time it takes to open your mouth and compliment someone you could brighten someone's day and if you don t the moment will pass like it did for Blake and now she wants to kick myself whatever reason you use to hold yourself back you are wrong the second the topic came up she said she wanted to audition but never wrote her mentor back about it if I don't t audition at least I can tell myself that I am amazing I am just too lazy to have what I want now we were getting somewhere that s why we dodge challenges to protect our egos even if it means eliminating the possibility of getting what we want I listened to Kendall talk about her fear that she wasn't t good enough and then asked her one simple question what if you're wrong it s a powerful question and we don't t ask it nearly enough you already know the answer they re waiting for the right time the same is true for your kids your spouse your friends and your colleagues one of the most insightful and enlightening aspects of adam grant's incredible book originals how nonconformists move the world is when he describes how some our greatest heroes are just like us in this simple regard they hesitated doubted themselves and almost missed the opportunities of their lifetimes because they didn't he feel ready in 1977 when an investor offered Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak funding to launch Apple Wozniak felt so afraid and uncertain he wanted to wait a while before he quit his job he was pushed by jobs, multiple friends, and his own parents to make the leap. Grant then writes this line in his book, which made my heart feel heavy, we can only imagine how many Wozniaks, Michelangelos, and Kings never pursued, publicized, or promoted their original ideas because they were not dragged or catapulted into the spotlight. The question to ask yourself is this one. What are you waiting for? I just applied for a job I never thought I would qualify for because I figured, why not just try it? I didn't t focus on my shortcomings but emphasized my qualities and got the job. Previously I would have forgotten about it after 5 seconds and not even tried by the way. Paula By emphasizing her qualities instead of focusing on her shortcomings, Paula was able to push past her fears and land the job. You may think you're protecting yourself from judgment, rejection, or upsetting someone, but when you make excuses and talk yourself into waiting, you are limiting your ability to make your dreams come true. I am amazed by how much time I've wasted in my life waiting for the right time, waiting until I am sure, waiting until I think my work is perfect or waiting until I feel like it. If you dream of being on television, I can tell you from first-hand experience that the TV executive you hope discovers you is actually on YouTube right now looking for someone who didn't he wait. The only difference between that idea for a novel you want to write and British author E.L. James who wrote the blockbuster Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, that was devoured by nearly every woman on the planet Earth and sold a million copies in four days, is the fact that she didn't t wait for permission, the right time, or to feel ready. By the way, that s also how Grammy Award-winning musician Ed Sheeran got discovered. And every single YouTube star, from Tyler Oakley, to makeup tutorial Phenom Michelle Fan, to my drunk kitchen host Hannah Hart. To Minecraft narrator Stampy Cat will tell you that if they had told themselves to wait until they felt ready or until they had a sponsor, they would still be living a boring life instead, creating a life of their dreams and laughing all the way to the bank. Waiting, thinking, and almost doing it don't count. No one wants to find out that they suck. That's why the moment right before you walk into a networking meeting. A 
party, an interview, a cafeteria, or start walking towards someone you find attractive. It can feel daunting. Five seconds of courage changes everything. Tom starts counting to himself, five, four, three, and by the time he gets to two, he starts walking across the room. His heart is racing, but for the first time in a long time he doesn't feel numb, he feels alive. Notice how we desperately want an assurance that Tom got the girl. It makes for a great movie plot, but getting the girl isn't the point. Even if she s amazing and they end up having crazy hot sex or go on to get married, the girl is not the source of power in the story. He wrote to me that he realized that nobody was going to come and get me to live the life that I want to live and that taking action is the only way to create my own space into the world. Just as Jean Baptiste said, I also believe that everybody could bring something new and original to the world we live in. The potential for massive greatness exists inside every single one of us. When you listen to your instincts, get up and face the day, Mel, suck it up and start walking, Tom, take care of your nephews. Catherine, Don T give up your seat, Rosa it s clear what you must do. But what most people don't know is that he created a total of more than 50,000 works of art. The more often that you choose courage, the more likely you will succeed. When you 5 4 3 2 1 push yourself forward you will discover the magic in your life and you open yourself up to the world, to opportunity, and to possibility. You might not get the girl, the part or the response you wanted but that's not the point. In the end, ULL get something way cooler ULL discover the power inside of you. I. Chapter 7. ULL never feel like it. T.S. A hot afternoon in Plano, Texas, and a woman named Christine is sitting in a meeting at work. The Conversation among her colleagues is winding down and the VP of Business Development says, these are great suggestions, anyone else? Christine has a decision to make and she ll make it in the next five seconds. She knows she should jump into the conversation, but first she stops to think. In the next five seconds, Christine will either decide to say nothing, a pattern that s become a habit at work or she will find the courage to speak up. If you've ever wondered why it is so hard to make yourself do the things that you know will solve your problems and improve your life, the answer is simple. Look at how quickly Christine's feelings rose in that meeting in Plano, Texas, according to neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, it s our feelings that decide for us 95% of the time. As Damasio puts it, Human beings are feeling machines that think, not thinking machines that feel, and that's how you ultimately make decisions. Based on how you feel, they could describe logically what they should do, and the pros and cons of the choice, but they couldn't actually make a choice. For example, when you ask yourself the question, what do I want to eat? You are actually asking yourself, what do I feel like eating? Similarly, I wasn't asking, should I get up? Subconsciously, I was asking, do I feel like getting up? Tom wasn't asking, do I want to walk over to her? Subconsciously he was asking, do I feel like walking over to her? Christine was doing the same thing at work. She wasn't asking, should I share my idea? Subconsciously, she was asking, do I feel like sharing my idea? Huge difference. The moment you feel too tired, you ll decide not to go for a run, but 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go, and you could make yourself go for one. If you don't feel like attacking the to-do list on your desk, you want t, but 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go, and you can force yourself to start working on it. If you don't feel worthy. ULL decide not to tell him what you really think, but 5. 
4 3 2 1 go and you can make yourself say it if you don't learn how to untangle your feelings from your actions you will never unlock your true potential once you hesitate you will start thinking about what you need to do you will weigh the pros and cons you will consider how you feel about what you need to do and you will talk yourself out of doing it i have said it before and I will say it again because it is so important. You are in T. Battling your ability to stick to a diet, execute a business plan, repair a broken marriage and rebuild your life, hit your sales goals, or win over a bad manager you are battling your feelings about doing it. Three years before Hamilton debuted to sell out crowds and $1,000 tickets, Miranda was still writing the musical and he was struggling with his feelings of self-doubt. I have a hard time finding the balance between not beating myself up when it doesn't happen as fast as I'd like it to, and not wasting time while I wait for it to happen. What did Miranda do? So, 5 4 3 2 1 Suck it up and get back to your piano. I love what his wife said too. Everyone has that problem all the time. She asks. Right. Let us go back to that meeting in Plano, Texas, where Christine has a decision to make. If one of her colleagues had raised a similar idea, as colleagues often do, she d spend the afternoon beating herself up for not talking. Then she opens her mouth and says, I have an idea. Everyone turns and looks at her and Christine feels like she might just die right there. She sits up a little taller, takes up a little more space by sliding her elbows wider across the table, as power posing suggests we do, and starts to speak, so I had this idea, you know how statistically all these millennials are using Snapchat as a platform too. Everyone listened to her idea, asked a few questions and then her boss said. Thanks, Christine. And by speaking up, when normally she'd de hold back, she proved to herself on a random afternoon in a conference room in Plano, Texas, that she was in fact good enough and smart enough to contribute ideas at work. It was how she leaned in as Sheryl Sandberg urges, outsmarted the lizard brain as Seth Godin implores, acted like an originalist Grant Champions, and dared greatly as Bren. Brown empowers us to do. Its premise is based on changing people's behavior first, which in turn changes their self-perception of the kind of person that they are based on the kinds of things that they do. He has said that, our minds aren't stupid. It's not like you can just tell your mind, think positively. UV got to nudge it a little more. Along. I believe you must do more than nudge. It's a moment when your values and goals will align. But your feelings will tell you no. Christine will need to use the number 5 second rule. To push herself to speak. The more that Christine. Is able to express her true self and bring out the ideas inside her, the more alive. Connected, and empowered she ll become. In a matter of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, she acted on a moment that changed everything and that gave her the confidence to teach a post graduation class. The reason why it is so freeing to use the number 5 second rule is because you are not only seizing the moment, you are also taking ownership of your life. You are changing your nose to why he says. As Jim says, never underestimate the power of. You he has used the rule to beat analysis paralysis and have one incredible year. As Wilson and Aristotle said, do good, be good. Change your behavior first. Because when you do, you change how you perceive yourself. That's exactly what Anna Kate discovered while using the she as a marketing professional who used to stay quiet when the room was watching, worried that her Colleagues would think she s silly and inexperienced only to learn that once she found the courage to change her behavior at work, something she never expected. 
happened her creativity flourished. Hi Mel. Here is my 5 second rule story. While I reluctantly drag myself out of bed, in 5 seconds, in order to do my 30 before 7.30, inspired by you, with the 5 second rule, I don't think it out or consider the long term life of my idea, nor do I send it up the ladder. For approval, I'll deal with that later. My team actually digs my ideas smile. Anna Kate. You can feel like a scaredy cat, but 5 4 3 2 1 act brave. 5 seconds at a time you make a decision to do, say. Or pursue what is truly important to you. That's how confidence grows one small, courageous move at a time. It's just you, the alarm clock, and 5 4 3 2 1. If you fail, it's because you made a decision to blow off the second. If you can change your morning routine, you can change anything. Third, I want you to experience a concept called activation energy and feel how hard it really is to push yourself to do simple things. But I am willing to practice it. That first bout of activation energy is so uncomfortable, but I want you to feel that resistance so you learn what it is like to push yourself. If you don't you get that huge push, like you did as a kid when your mother turned off the TV and said, it's a beautiful day, get outside and go do something. Comma your brain will inevitably take you down the path of doing nothing. When you start to count 5 4 3 2 1, it is the beginning of a chain reaction that not only awakens the prefrontal cortex, but also gets you ready to make that physical initial huge push that s required to change. Plus, as Emma discovered, it will give you a much more positive outlook on the day. That's also what Tracy experienced. If you can't get yourself out of bed, then you'll never be able to pursue all of the other changes that you want to make in your life. And if you take that simple step of taking control of your mornings, you'll catalyze a chain of events that leads to change everywhere. Even though it isn't too easy to drag your ass out of bed, as Patty describes, you must push yourself to complete the challenge. As soon as that alarm goes off, ULL think about how you feel about getting up. ULL think, this wake up challenge is stupid. ULL feel tired. ULL try to convince yourself to start tomorrow. Just like Tim. You will not want to get up but the number 5 second rule will help. You win the battle with your feelings by giving you something to do that helps you. Get out of bed. In those moments, the rule will help you take action like it does for Jessica. I have found that the 5 4 3 2 1 go helps on those days when an I just on T feel like it attitude creeps in which is. Every day, so again, thank you. That I just on T feel like it attitude has a way of taking over your entire day. And that's another reason why this use the rule is so important. He said it sucked when he first tried it. But over time, 